DUA refugees begin to act up, Mr. Aizawa and Kurugiri's fates are revealed, and Himiko Toga becomes the most dangerous threat to UA. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 325 is finally out, and with it we get to witness the aftermath of Ochako Uraraka's heartfelt speech to the refugees of UA High School. And not only did she win the hearts of the people in the My Hero world and our world alike, but she also managed to make Midoriya cry. Which sounds absolutely horrible out of context, but in context it is one of the most beautiful things that could have possibly happened. In this chapter, Kota and the giant fox lady, who really needs a name at this point, comfort a distraught Midoriya, the angry mob makes some not so angry moves and Principal Nezu finally gets in contact with Class 1A's homeroom teacher. But before I begin talking about this chapter I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter we saw best girl Ochako continue her speech about allowing her boy toy to stay over for a quickie quick rest to the ungrateful UA freeloaders who seem to be the most self-entitled pricks I have ever seen in my life. Seriously, heroes are getting killed out here trying to defend these guys and they're all just like, but you broke our trust. Sit down, shut up, and be grateful All Might didn't decide to United States smash that ass. Whoa, that sounded way more sexual than I intended. But anyway, as Uraraka is having a back and forth with, like, one dude about why they should allow Midoriya to stay, Ida, being the number one wingman, points out to Midoriya that Uraraka is fighting for him. A and everyone else, but mainly for him. Realizing this causes Midoriya to get emotional as the first ever person to lift him up and the girl that quite literally saved his life is putting herself in the line of fire for him once more. And after Uraraka explains to the crowd and to Midoriya himself that underneath his special power he's just another tired and scared high school kid, Izuku finally breaks, falling to the ground, clutching his stomach like he has a nasty shit on the way and allowing himself to cry. With Midoriya in tears on his knees in front of all of the angry protesters, which I imagine was not the return he was expecting, Uraraka shouts out one last plea to to let Izuku return to his hero academy. And chapter 324 ended with Kota and the giant fox lady who might have awakened something in me rushing out to comfort a broken Midoriya. And this is where chapter 325 picks up. This chapter opens up exactly where the last chapter left off, with Kota and the giant fox lady running out from the angry mob to comfort a crying and broken Midoriya. We see that Mineta also tries to run out and comfort Midoriya as well, but he is stopped by Ida, who tells the small purple pervert that now it's not their turn. As Ida says this, he also looks up with a determined face towards Uraraka, who can now be seen with tears of her own atop of UA. As Kota is making his way to Deku, he calls out to him exclaiming, Big Bro Midoriya. And when he reaches Izuku, we see that he has also burst into tears as he apologizes for being paralyzed with fear. Kota explains that when he heard the giant fox woman talking about how Deku protected her, he just knew that he had to become someone like Deku. And with this, Kota forces out a smile through the tears pouring down his face as he tells Midoriya, I am here, so please don't don't cry anymore. Now this is actually a fantastic moment that is not only emotional, but also demonstrates how much of an impact Midoriya has already had. As Kota saying, I am here, isn't him imitating All Might, but it's him imitating Midoriya. A great nod to the fact that Izuku is well on his way in becoming just like his hero. But anyway, after this, the giant fox woman chimes in, also crying, might I add, there's a lot of tears in this one, saying, that she tried to get into multiple shelters, but they all rejected her because of her mutant type quirk. However, thanks to her being rejected at all of the other places, she ended up here at UA, where she got to meet Deku again. She goes on to say that she was very lucky to find Midoriya, and she thanks him, saying, thanks for helping me, Mr. Crybaby Hero. And together, she and Kota both give Midoriya a big hug. I also want to point out that I love the little symbolism here of the small, innocent, normal human boy and the gigantic fox 
boxperson woman tanking Midoriya, showing us and the crowd that it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like, Deku will always try to save you. Following this, the story cuts back to the angry mob, where we see the old man from the very first chapter of the entire series stand out and start to defend Deku. He exclaims that instead of blaming Midoriya, they should at least hear him out, and how it's obvious he doesn't want to just stay there resting forever. Midoriya kept fighting because there was a lack of heroes, and now he just needs to take a break. After saying this, another spectator jumps in protesting that if that's the case, why doesn't he just go to somewhere like Shiketsu? But someone else in the crowd points out that that would just be pushing the problem onto them. The old man then goes on to explain that everyone has gotten so used to All Might single-handedly paving the way for others and dominating any opponent or problem he encountered that they have forgotten about the true essence of what it means to be a hero. He continues saying that even now, although the world is in shambles, there are still those out there fighting, constantly throwing their lives on the line, not for fame or for fortune, but for all of them. And he ends this speech by saying, if we reject the very few real heroes that remain, who will we have left to help us get back to the lives we used to have? With the crowd in utter silence after this speech, the civilian who angrily opposed Deku in the last chapter speaks up, saying that a rumor spread of a beat up man who wielded multiple quirks. Some people claimed he was secretly a henchman for all for one, while others saw him to be a true hero. And then the man proceeds to ask Deku if, after resting in UA, he will be able to turn things back to normal. To which Deku replies, I am no longer alone and I will take back everything. The story then cuts over to UA teacher Ectoplasm meeting with Endeavor, Hawks and Shoto, who are just on the outskirts of the UA barrier. Ectoplasm asks the trio if they heard Uraraka's speech, and he tells them to come in, because they will not want to miss what's happening. As the three start to make their way in, Endeavor begins blaming himself, saying that he made Deku wander around alone, and it got them nowhere. However, Hawks corrects him, saying that the progress they made is right in front of their eyes, right here at UA. Hawks then goes on to explain that All For One is a power formed by the connection between people. Because of it, All Might connected to Midoriya, Midoriya connected to Class 1A, and Uraraka connected the civilians to Midoriya. And with this, we see a giant panel of all the civilians coming over to help 1A and handing out umbrellas to all of the students as as Hawks' narration continues, if everyone can begin to be considerate to one another, even just a little, then that will surely lead to a bright future, where heroes will have enough time to laugh. As this happy scene continues, we also get a quick shot of Shoto and Endeavor, where Shoto reminds Endeavor that they need to stop Toya together, and Endeavor agrees. Following this, we see Nezu on the phone with none other than Shota Aizawa, and the story cuts over to Aizawa where we see him sitting on his hospital bed. Nezu tells Aizawa that Class 1A was able to do what he himself couldn't, and Aizawa, with a smirk on his face, tells Nezu to let Ida know that he did a great job. Nezu then asks Aizawa about his leg, and it's here where it's unveiled that 1A's homeroom teacher now has a prosthetic robotic metal leg. Also, he seems to have what I believe to be an eye patch over his right eye. Either that, or his eye is missing entirely. But anyway, Aizawa replies to Nezu's inquiry about his leg, saying, that he hasn't gotten used to it as much as Mirko has to hers. Nezu then asks Aizawa how Kurugiri is, and it's here where we learn that after Aizawa and Present Mike managed to get Oboro to come out of Kurugiri, he was secretly transferred to Central Hospital, where they have been performing
performing reconstructive research on him. Aizawa also goes on to say that they have been constantly calling out to Kurugiri, but have had no success in bringing out Obero again so far. However, Nezu replies to this saying that even if it is small, there is still a spark of hope in him. The conversation then goes away from Kurugiri as Aizawa brings up the topic of Himiko Toga, asking if the countermeasures are still in place to deal with her transformation abilities. To which Nezu responds, yes, and that they have calculated how much blood she can absorb and her maximum transformation time. So they have set up a new countermeasure, putting any new refugees through a period of isolation before they are actually allowed to enter UA. And with this, chapter 325 comes to a close, as Aizawa proclaims that since UA is now fully fortified, it is now time for their revenge. And the last shot we see of this chapter is of All Might standing outside of the UA barrier with a seemingly gloomy face. Overall, this was another enjoyable chapter. Kota saying the classic I am here line to Izuku was both adorable and absolutely heartbreaking at the same time. It genuinely caught me off guard a bit. Seeing the old man who called Midoriya a fanboy at the start of the series standing up and fighting for Midoriya was a nice touch to add in, but it also makes sense narratively that he would bring up how society became dependent on All Might, as he would have seen Hero Society before the rise of their great symbol. Deku agreeing that he is no longer alone and that he will save the world with his friends was a well-needed moment. And also, in this one panel, we do see that Mama Midoriya finally got her baby boy back. It's about time if you ask me. Seeing Aizawa again was also great, and knowing that he's ready to take action and strike back has got me hyped up and ready for what comes next. It feels like this is the conclusion and the end of this arc, especially with this chapter being overall a very happy and satisfying ending to Midoriya's vigilante adventures. So I am super curious to see where the next arc takes us. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.